In the name of the living and loving God, who is Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit. So Mardi Gras was fun. How many people came to Mardi Gras? That was a good crowd. There were 100 people there. And um, you who, who were not able to make it might want to come next year. Here's why. There was great food, good music, a lot of activity, a lot of joy. Um, hallelujah bells, a lot of activity, I said. And we walked down, had a little parade going down here the street, coming back up the street, coming back in. And, and, you know, it was, it was like people really liked being with each other. I mean, that, it was that kind of joy there. I mean, maybe even, maybe even really loving each other. It was, it was wonderful. And then the tone changed a little bit. We uh, said farewell to the hallelujahs. I'm not going to say that for the season of Lent. I might make a mistake once in a while, but we're not supposed to say it for the whole season of Lent. And then we made ashes for Ash Wednesday. <coughs> and then all hundred of us gathered in a circle and held hands and listened to Aaron Neville of the Neville Brothers from New Orleans sing Amazing Grace. I once but lost, but now I'm found. Blind but now see, Amazing Grace. And then the tone changed even more the next day, Ash Wednesday. How many of you were here for Ash Wednesday? Good. And I hope if you weren't here, you were some other place because that's a terribly important event in the life of the church. Because on that day, we get so serious about the ways in which we have drifted away from God, being faithful to God. The litany of penitence. Every year when I read that, the Litany of Penitence, and you ought to look in the prayer book sometime or go online, the online prayer book, and, and look at the Litany of Penitence because it lists every kind of sin you can think, every kind of way that we could probably been, been, have missed the mark with God. And it's powerful to read that. I mean, about prejudice, about anger, about arrogance, all of that. And then to know that God loves us. God forgives us. My point is this. In the life of this church, we've gone from, from light to love to joy to confession to awareness of our sins to forgiveness. It's a movement. And then after that, after that, we focus during the season of Lent. What can we do about the fact, how can we be more faithful so that we can do God's ministry in the world? And the interesting thing that is that in the Gospel of Mark, you know, Mark is the one who sort of keeps everything short and sweet. In the Gospel of Mark, in which you just heard, he, he piles it all together, the whole temptation scene, and before that, the baptism of Jesus. And this sort of the same pattern. I mean, Jesus comes from his home, from Nazareth, makes that journey to the Jordan River, and there is John, maybe his relative, and he's baptized in the waters. And he hears God say, you are my son, my beloved, with you I am well pleased. I mean, a lot of love there flowing between God the Creator and Jesus. And then immediately in the next sentence, I mean in the next breath, the Spirit, God, the Spirit, forced, drove Jesus out into the wilderness. That's a, that's a scary place, uh, especially back before, before we had four-wheel drive Jeeps and that kind of stuff. It was a really scary place because out in the wilderness, there was no support system. And even as described here, there were wild beasts. In other words, a lot of... A lot of reasons to be scared, nervous, <clears throat> anxious, fearful. And a lot of temptations, a lot of temptations to sort of bail from what God wants Jesus to do and to go to some safer place. But, but, Jesus dealt with it and was faithful. And after that, was empowered to preach the gospel, to do God's ministry, in the world. See, this is sort of a 
sort of a standard rhythm and uh, process there. One, what we experience here, and one in the gospel. So for the rest of this season of Lent, and we did it this morning at the 8 o'clock service because uh, there was not the fantastic sung great litany, but one of the ways that we begin worship during the season of Lent is with a penitential order. And um, what we say is, um, you know, the great commandment, that you love God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and that you love your neighbor, or you love that which God loves. And that's what I want us to focus on, this Lent. Now I know that Lent is a time when you might give up something or take on something to improve your life or to get closer to God, but, um, but I want us to focus on how we can in fact love God more. How can we learn to love God more? I remember um, at one time um, years ago that um, I was sort of thinking, so what am I going to do for Lent? Um, and I was taking it very seriously. And I wanted to sort of improve things to address an issue that had been, um, I guess, a character flaw of mine. And it was procrastination. I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't disastrously, you know, uh, uh, procrastinating, but you know, it's sort of complicated thing sometimes. And, and so, so I went to Barnes and Noble to the self-help section and, and they had a lot of books on procrastination. And, <laughs> and, I, and I picked a book, it was called Dealing with Procrastination. I thought that'd be a pretty good idea. And I brought it home and I put it on the shelf. <laughs> that was 30 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> and it's still there. Does anybody want my book on procrastination? <laughs> but you know what I realized the more I sort of say, why am I not doing that? Because really, really my getting that book had nothing to do with learning how to love God more, to make more room for God to be in my life or to receive God's love. It was so that I could be a better priest. You know, I could get more stuff done. I could start more stuff going on. Maybe I'd grow up to be a bishop or a presiding bishop or a pope or something like that. I don't know. But it was all about self-improvement. That's the section it was in, in Barnes and Noble. And um, that's not what Lent's about. It's not. I mean, it might be good to give up smoking or, you know, wait. But, but, but it's really not about self-improvement. It's really about focusing on finding a way, which is improving, finding a way for us to receive God's love more often and more deeply. And it's a two-way street. And to love God more fully and more often. It's just that simple. Of course, the question is, if we're called to do it more, how come we haven't been doing it more already? And that's where a faith community comes in. And we talk about this, and it, because it's true. That's where we can be accountable to each other, maybe to choose one or two people to say, I want you, I want you to check on me and make sure I'm doing it. To be accountable in some way or in a learning group, or that's one thing that's important. Another thing is, is again, we talk about this, but it's a fact, is to find time to be still in prayer, not praying for the sick or for something we need, but to do silent prayer. Because that's, that's when we can really be close to God. We can listen and we can receive more fully when we be quiet, when we're quiet and be with God. And the other way which is stated in the Ash Wednesday Liturgy and inviting you to a, the observance of a holy land is to spend time in scripture and just to read it and to and to explore it, and to share your understandings with others. So you see, we jumped into a sort of, this is what you need to do. But let me go back to, you've got to decide. Because I know everybody's got a crazy schedule. But this is important. 
in this world, this dangerous world in which we live, in this world in which we don't know what's going to happen next, in this world which seems to be really fragile, in this world in which there are loads and loads of challenges, and it affects nations and the, and the planet, and you know, it, it just sort of has ripple effect all through our society and our culture. It's really, really important that we are close to the heart of God, that our heart and God's heart are really close, and that we feel affirmed and loved by the Creator, and that we share our love with God. That's how we become transformed Christians, focusing on love. That's how we become something new and something different and maybe even something more effective in the world, is to really be close to God and to be guided throughout our days by the voice of God in our lives. I do invite you to the observance of a holy Lent, but make it holy, not just productive. Make it holy as we prepare to live out this story of Jesus and the resurrection <clears throat> later on. Make these five weeks holy. Amen.